Hi and welcome back. I hope you're all enjoying a very Merry Christmas. Um, to celebrate the midwinter feasting season, I'm going to paint this winter silver birch scene. Um, it's nice and easy. It uses masking fluid and just simple wet in wet techniques mostly to create a scene that even beginners can try. Um, my paper is Saunders Waterford cold pressed paper. It's taped to my board and my board's at an angle of about 45 degrees. I'm using ordinary decorator's masking tape. Um, it's fine. It'll create a nice white border for my painting. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is roughly sketch in quite a low horizon line and then I'm going to sketch in the very rough shapes of my main silver birches. Um, just the trunks, just thin lines going slightly different angles to each other from just below the horizon line up off the top of the page. And then I'm going to use masking fluid on those trees and then just not have to worry about keeping um, the bark on the trunks pale um, when I put in my sky wash and the rest of the painting I can do the trees last and I can do them quite easily with a very simple wet in wet technique that actually works really well for birch trees. I'm just going to do a very simple composition with two groups of these birch trees, one on the left, one on the right, slightly different from each other, um, but using the birch trees as a sort of framing device to frame the lighter part of the sky. So it's like we're going to be looking through the birch trees. Now I'm using a small detail brush to apply my masking fluid and this is my masking fluid. Any um, good make of masking fluid will do. Just test it on your paper first because some cheap papers will tear when you try to remove the masking fluid and that will ruin your painting. So check your fluid first on the paper that you're going to use on a scrap of it to make sure that, that it works. And then dip your paintbrush, an old one, into some soap. Rub some sort of wet soap into the bristles before you dip it into the masking fluid. Masking fluid is made of latex and it will ruin your brush. So the soap will protect it and you should be able to wash it out very easily after that. Um, but just, just in case, use an old brush that you don't mind um, because sometimes um, the masking fluid can get stuck in the ferrule and it'll wreck the brush. So you can see that I'm simply filling in those trunks with the masking fluid. It's as simple as that. Don't worry if you get any spots or splatters or mistakes with the masking fluid. Just wait for it to dry and then rub the part off that you don't want just to remove it. So you can see that all of my trunks have been masked to protect them from the wash. I now need to leave that to dry completely. Once it's completely dry, I can come back and start to paint. So the first thing that I'll do now is I'll wet my sky all over and then I'll wet my ground, but slightly less. I don't want to cover the ground with paint, uh, but I do want it to pick up a bit of paint. So I'm wetting my sky thoroughly and then I'm going to use a bit of raw sienna, quite weak, and I'm going to run that across the middle of the sky and that's going to help to create um, the light in my sky that I'm looking for in this sort of crisp winter scene. I'm using an extra large um, Pro Art Ron Ranson Harkey brush for this and this is cerulean blue. I don't want it to be vivid and bright like a summer sky but I want that kind of that really nice pale but beautiful blue that you get on cold crisp winter days. So I'm running it again at a slight angle across my sky and now I've dipped into a bit of indigo. Not much, you can see my colours are pale. Uh, my mixtures are quite watery with enough pigment to give me these sorts of colours um, knowing that they were slightly 
dry slightly paler than this. And you can see my sky starting to build up. Now this is where I'm going to now lift out a bit more light with a clean, damp, flat brush. It's a three quarter inch flat brush and I'm making sure it's thoroughly clean. It wasn't quite clean there. You can see there's a little bit of grey gone in the sky, but now I've cleaned it properly. I'm just lifting out a bit of the paint, scrubbing with this brush through the paint and also blending some of these colours together a little bit more so that I end up with a lovely, soft, um, lightly clouded sky, if you see what I mean, but with white fluffy clouds. If you get a bead of water running down, which you probably will because it's um, the board's at 45 degrees, so gravity is bringing the paint down, use a clean, damp brush just to mop it off. And if you go into your snow area, use a tissue and just wipe that, wipe that clean. And now that I've um, dried off across the top of my snow line, I'm using um, my medium sized Pro Art Ron Ranson Harky brush and a slightly drier mixture of indigo and Payne's grey. Um, not too pigmented, but certainly not wet. Otherwise it will give me cauliflowers and runbacks. And I'm putting in just some hints of distant trees just below that hill, hillside. And cleaning it up underneath if I need to. Clean damp brush will just take that off and, and neaten and clean up that line a bit there, the snow line. So I'm nearly finished. I just think I want a little bit of that cerulean blue just swept across the snow, not too much. I'm going to keep that mostly um, pale, quite close to the white of the paper. There's just going to be that little bit of glow um, from the sky reflecting from the snow. So now to leave it to dry completely and then come back and carry on. It's now dry, um, so what I've done is I've mixed up um, a medium consistency of indigo and Payne's grey. Um, it's still fairly watery and inky consistency and using my rigger, it's a number two rigger, I'm afraid, I don't know what make it is because the name has washed off the handle. Uh, any rigger or any um, round brush, anything like that, that holds enough paint to pull up these kinds of shapes. I'm sorry that my filming setup means that when I paint this part of the painting, I'm afraid you can't really see it. My hand is covering. I do apologize for that. I'm gonna see if I can sort that out over the coming year, see if I can sort of rearrange my setup a bit. But you can see that I'm pulling up some darker trees to go in between my silver birches. Just very plain, very simple, with a few overlapping branches keeping it nice and thin so they've, I've got these nice, elegant, simple trees. And as you can see, where I'm pulling my branches over the masked out areas of the trunks, then these trees will appear to be behind the birches. So that'll just help to give a little bit of form and depth to the painting. You can see more easily here how I'm painting these lines. Um, every time I sort of run out of paint, I'm dipping back into some more of this inky consistency paint. I'm working between my trees, just deciding as I go where I think another few trees should be in order to balance up the composition and keep this kind of um, like a sort of a frame, you know, the trees are the frame through which you look at the view beyond. I'm trying to vary the angles at which the trees grow out slightly because that adds more interest to the scene. Just pulling a few of these branches across towards the middle as well. This is another device that you can use to help to guide your viewer's eye um, 
to where you want them to look and here we want them to see the sky and the light. I won't show you the painting of all of these because they're all painted in exactly the same way. I'm going to leave them um, at this stage. I can add some more if I want to once I've put in my silver birches, but for now I'm going to let that dry completely. And now that it's dry, I want to remove my masking fluid, but first I'm going to check with a piece of tissue just where there might be still some slightly wet paint uh, beaded up on the latex surface of the masking fluid because if you try to rub the masking fluid off then you may smudge paint um, across your painting so make sure that it's all clean first and then with a finger or the tacky side of masking tape or um, an eraser you can remove all of the masking fluid from your trees Again, I won't show it all because it can take a little while to get it all off properly. But once it's off, use a dry brush and flick off all of the little tiny um, latex or, or rubber bits of, um, of masking fluid. Just make sure there's nothing still left. You can go over it gently with your fingers and you can feel if there's anything left there. And now I'm going to use the wet in wet technique to paint each individual birch tree. Now the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to, using my small calligraphy brush or any small round brush or a detail brush, I'm wetting the trunk where the masking fluid is. So I'm being careful to follow the line that's been left now that I have no fluid there. Once that's wet, then I'm going to dip into a, a mixture of Payne's Grey and Indigo and I'm going to dot and dab that and allow it to run wet in wet just along that trunk. So you can see I've left some gaps. Those gaps will partly indicate the paler areas of the bark and then I will dot in some burnt umber as well. So I get some brown hints there on the bark too. I hope you can see that already that's looking quite effective. You can just dab off if it goes on a bit too dark in some places and that gives even more of a sort of a, a, a bark effect if you're quite gentle with that. Just darken it up where it comes out of the snow. Maybe just a few little dots and dashes. Just wherever you think it needs it, just to increase the effect of that bark. And I'm going to paint all of the trees in exactly the same way. But what I'm also going to do is while the trees are wet, um, I'm going to take my clean squirrel mop brush and just run it across the bottom um, at an angle, coming down the page just gently, just taking a little bit of the paint with me from the tree trunk base to give me the indication of a shadow. I'll do one more of these trees in this way to show you and then I'll finish the rest of the trees off um, off camera because it takes quite a while, although it's a very simple process. So within each trunk, you're creating a wet in wet environment by wetting the trunks and then dropping in the paint. And because the board's at 45 degrees, the paint will sort of all sort of run down a little bit. Um, it'll be stronger in some places and not in others. You'll get paler marks, um, you'll get the unpainted paper and then dipping in the brown, it will diffuse wet and wet into the indigo and Payne's grey. And hopefully you get that kind of really nice silver birch effect. I mean, you can have as many marks as you want in this. If you want paler tree trunks, then put less of the indigo and less of the brown, leave much larger um, white spaces. And then just do that dabbing out and then I shall now do all of the trees in exactly the same way. And here we are 
um, it looks quite effective. Um, I don't think I need to do too much more. I'm just going to pull off the shadows. Trying to imagine the sort of the way the light, if the light is right is dead in front of, of the viewer, it's just going to leave the shadow coming back. And that gives us a nice amount of perspective. I'm just going to put in a few more a few more branches. I mean, you could you could put in a lot more branches. You could put some little um, grasses and twigs coming out of the snow here and there. You could um, add figures in the distance. Um, you could add all sorts of things to a simple scene like this. It's really good practice for wet in wet and also for um, sort of diff watching out for colour blending on the page, diffusions and sort of keeping that nice glow in the sky and keeping um, the unpainted paper showing through beautifully for the snow with just the palest shadows. So now using my small calligraphy brush and quite a rich mixture of Payne's Grey and Indigo, putting in these last few branches, just a few of them coming up from the silver birches. So trying to keep it nice and simple, so it's sort of fairly stylized this painting, rather than realistic, but I think it still gives a nice impression of the scene that I'm trying to convey. So I think I'm just about done now. Um, and I always find it's best to remove the tape and have a look at the painting and see how it looks with a clean white border. This can sometimes reveal if there's a, anything slightly out of balance or if it just needs anything extra do doing to it. And I think, as I said earlier, you can always add as much or as little detail as you like. I mean, if we zoom in a little bit closer, and I'll just show you the kind of thing that I mean, um, you could go over this and spend quite a while just adding extra little details to um, the bark. Uh, once it's dry, you can go in um, with like rich wet paint on a detail brush or a rigger, or a calligraphy brush and just dot in or add some little lines uh, just as indications of all that kind of beautiful marking on the silver birch bark. Or you can just leave it sort of soft and impressionistic like this. Well, I hope that was helpful. Please leave us a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group and wishing you all season's greetings um, for the midwinter season, Christmas and the coming new year. I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.